Hello you guys. Um, in this video we're going to be looking at the very last topic of unit 1.2, um, these notes, topic 4. Uh, and so in these notes uh, we've been looking at these different types of macromolecules, these four different types of macromolecules that exist in um, living things and the structure of these macromolecules and their functions. We've looked at carbohydrates, we looked at pr proteins, we looked at nucleic acids. Um, in these notes we're going to look at um, lipids and what these molecules look like and what they do. Um, so lipids, well just to again recap real quick, in, in each of these types of macromolecules what we're looking at are these, these giant molecules, carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids that are made up of these monomers that bind together um, to form these polymers. Uh, and now lipids are, a, a, you're going to see it's a little bit different. Um, this is kind of, a, I call it like a leftover category. Um, there's a pretty big variety of lipids that kind of sometimes don't even look like one another, but they're still called lipids. Uh, and so one thing that they all do have in common is that um, they have this unifying feature of being mostly hydrophobic. So lipids are these nonpolar molecules, um, are these molecules that are mostly nonpolar and they're hydrophobic and they don't like water. And so that's one thing we find in common amongst all lipids is that they're mostly they don't like water, they're hydrophobic. Um, and that's because they're mostly hydrophobic because they contain, um, or they consist mostly of these, 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 these network of hydrocarbons, um, a lot of extensive hydrocarbon uh, carbons, carbons and hydrogens bonded together, and that's nonpolar and hydrophobic doesn't like water. And in these lipids, we're not gonna see, we'll see a little bit, but not a lot of functional groups that are polar, but they don't have too many. So overall, they remain mostly nonpolar. Um, in lipids, the elements that you're going to see, even on these slides, if you look closely at the pictures, you're going to see carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, just like we saw in all the other ones so far. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, that's in carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids. Um, but in lipids, you're also going to see some phosphorus um, as well. So you're seeing carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and then in some lipids, there's phosphorus. Uh, and uh, another thing to point out is that... Uh, and you'll kind of, this will make sense a little bit more in a second, is that lipids, technically, we don't consider them true polymers, um, which carbohydrates, nucleic acids, and proteins, those are true polymers, which means they're made up of monomers that can bind to each other repeatedly and over and over and over and over and over again very extensively. And lipids, um, we will see things that kind of look like monomers, um, these smaller pieces that do bind together, but they're not going to bind to each other repeatedly, forming these almost infinitely long macromolecules. Um, and so hopefully you'll kind of see that in a second. Um, now we're going to look at three main types of lipids that you need to know. There's, there's fats, which are lipids, phospholipids, which are lipids, and steroids, which are lipids. We're going to look at these three um, in this topic. And hopefully this will go pretty quick because there's not a lot of information here. So let's start with fats. Now fats are called triglycerides. So triglycerides, that's a fancy word for fat. Um, and uh, these molecules are, are very nonpolar, very hydrophobic, don't like water. Um, and so triglycerides, uh, they're made up of these smaller components, um, which we can consider them monomers. And so there's, there's four monomers that get put together to build a triglyceride. One triglyceride is made up of four pieces. And one of those pieces is a fatty acid, and there's actually three of them. So there's going to be three fatty acids bonded together, bonded to this m smaller molecule called glycerol. So glycerol is one of the, m the monomers, and then fatty acids are the the other monomers. So there's going to be three fatty acids, three of these guys, and if you look at these fatty acids, it's just a huge chain of hydrocarbons, um, three of them, and we're going to bond it to this glycerol molecule, which contains three carbons, carbon, 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 and to each of those, we're going to attach these um, fatty acids to. So this is a triglyceride right here, um, where my mouse is circling. This this guy, this one, this one thing is a triglyceride, three fatty acids bonded to a glycerol molecule. Um, and then that's that's the triglyceride. And so this is kind of what I was saying earlier about them not being true polymers. You can't add on to this. Like you can go build another triglyceride, but that's going to be a separate molecule. Like this molecule is done. Like it's you put these guys together, those four pieces, and then you have your molecule. You can't keep adding on to that, um, which makes it a lot different than the other macromolecules we were looking at. Anyway, these um, fatty acids are joined to the glycerol via a dehydration synthesis reaction. 
um, just like we've been seeing over and over again. So that's what bonds these monomers together and so and results in a water molecule being produced. And so then you end up with this new bond now connecting this glycerol with this fatty acid chain. Um, and we call that linkage an ester linkage. That's the name of the bond that links together the glycerol with a fatty acid. So to make one triglyceride, you're gonna have to do three dehydration synthesis reactions. So one reaction here to join this fatty acid, another one to join this fatty acid, and a third one to join this fatty acid. And that's gonna result in three new covalent bonds now connecting these guys to the glycerol molecule, um, these ester linkages, and now you have your triglyceride, um, or this molecule of fat. Now the function of triglycerides, like why are these things and living things and what do they do? Um, and uh, their function mainly is energy storage. And so fats are used to store energy. All of these carbons and hydrogen carbons, these, these carbon-hydrogen bonds, which there's a lot of in this picture here, those are, are, are basically storing a bunch of chemical energy that cells can tap into when needed. So these are really good at uh, storing large amounts of energy in a compact structure because of all of these, these bonds that we see. Um, and inside these bonds, there's, there's chemical energy that we can, we can access later on. And so um, they're used to store energy. And this is uh, kind of like carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are also used to store energy. But the, the difference here is triglycerides, these fat molecules, this is usually for long-term energy storage. So this is energy that an organism probably won't use for a while. So this is they're going to save it in their body for much later year, use, which could be years later even. Um, but it's really good at packing in lots of energy in this condensed little molecule. Um, and in mammals also, it's worth pointing out that in mammals, we've also, we use fat to store energy, but we've also evolved to, to use fat to, to insulate our bodies, to control, make our bodies nice and warm and not lose heat as much. Um, but that's the function of these, these triglycerides. And so this picture kind of summarizes the synthesis of triglycerides, or if you were to take this triglyceride and break it down, you're either putting the fatty acids together with the glycerol or taking them apart via dehydration reactions or hydrolysis reactions. Um, there's two types of triglycerides uh, that you guys need to know. There's they're saturated and unsaturated triglycerides, or we could just say saturated and unsaturated fats. Um, you might have heard these words before because in all the food you're eating, in a lot of the food you're eating, if you look at the nutrition label, not only will you see that you're eating carbohydrates and proteins, but um, in a lot of the food you're eating, you're, you're also eating fats. And those fats can be, which are triglycerides, these molecules I'm showing you, they can be um, classified as either saturated or unsaturated. So I want to explain the difference because you guys need to know the difference. In saturated fats, saturated fats um, are triglycerides, and they have these three fatty acid chains connected to glycerol. But these fatty acid chains, um, they're going to contain all single bonds between the carbons. If you look at this fatty acid right here that they're zooming in on and showing you the structure of, between all of these carbons, there's single bonds, single bond, single bond, single bond, single bond, single bond, single bond. So they all have 100% single bonds in this fatty acid and in this fatty acid and this fatty acid. That's, that's a saturated fat by definition, is when you have um, fatty acids or a fat molecule, a triglyceride, that contains fatty acids that have all single bonds. And now this is the type of fat that you're usually going to see produced in animals. Animals produce a lot of saturated fats. So even humans, the fat that's in your body um, is, is, is mostly saturated fat. Um, and so uh, anytime we have fat that came from an animal, it's usually going to contain a lot of saturated fat. So like butter, for example, which is made using milk, um, there's fat molecules in milk, and um, that butter is, is almost pure saturated fat, okay? These type of molecules um, came from an animal. Or like the, the fat that if you eat a nice juicy piece of steak that has fat on it, that fat, that's saturated fat. And um, this fat Saturated fat is usually solid at room temperature. So solid, maybe blubbery, but like it's it's solid at room temperature usually. Um, now, the other type of fat is an unsaturated fat. Unsaturated fats, these are also triglycerides, which means they have three fatty acids attached to glycerol. Um, but the difference here is on these fatty acids, if you look at them and examine them, there's not going to be all single bonds. There's going to be some double bonds, maybe even some triple bonds. And if there's not all single bonds then it's not a saturated fat. So this would be considered an unsaturated fat because there's some double and triple bonds in this, this fatty acid. Um, and so if, if one of these fatty acids 
has some double or triple bonds, then by default, this is going to be an unsaturated fat. Because the only time you're a saturated fat is if all three fatty acids have all single bonds. But if some of them don't, or if all three of them don't, um, then, then you're no longer saturated. You're now an unsaturated fat. And um, these unsaturated fats, those double bonds and even those triple bonds, it creates these, these things that we call kinks in these, these chains. And so then these, these fatty acids start to kink in different directions and bend in different directions. If you just look at the difference here, these are all very linear, linear, right? Nice and organized, straight fatty acid chains. Whereas these guys, because of the double and triple bonds, it causes this kinking to occur um, where they kind of like flip in different directions, these fatty acid tails. And because of that, that actually causes this to be a liquid usually at room temperature. Um, because of this, these, these triglycerides that are unsaturated, when they try to like be right next to each other, it's hard for them to be right next to each other because of their fatty acids like hitting each other and like pushing them away from each other. So they can't get as close to each other. And because they can't get as close to each other, they exist as a liquid at room temperature usually. Whereas saturated fats, um, because they're so organized and very um, square shaped, I guess you could call it, um, they, they, can, they can lay right on top of each other very compactly. They can be more compacted with one another. And that's why they form a solid at room temperature. And so usually unsaturated fats, this is what we call oils. So when you hear the word oil, it's basically referring to liquid fat. It's still fat, it's just liquid. Usually we call it oil. And this is usually being made in plants. So plants um, are usually making a lot more unsaturated fat. And so in plants, you're gonna find a higher amount of unsaturated fat, fats. This is the type of fat that they like to make to store their energy, whereas we like to make saturated fats to store our energy. It's all the same. It's all storing energy, but just two different types. Like vegetable oil, that's just almost pure unsaturated fat. You can go home and look at vegetable oil or avocado oil or olive oil, whatever oil you want from a plant, it's gonna have a lot of um, unsaturated fats a lot of the time. Um, and so anyway, that's the difference between the two. So those are triglycerides. Those are fats, fats and oils, triglycerides, right? Um, they store energy. Now, another type of lipid you need to know are phospholipids. These look pretty similar actually to triglycerides. Um, but there, there is an important difference you need to know. So in a phospholipid, this contains a glycerol molecule. So here's the glycerol right here, the three carbon glycerol molecule, and there's fatty acids, but there's only two, there's two fatty acid chains attached to the glycerol. And instead of a third fatty acid, there's, um, instead of that, you're gonna find a phosphate group. So there's a phosphate group attached to the glycerol along with two fatty acids. So that's the difference here that you need to know. In a phospholipid, it has two fatty acids with a phosphate group attached to the glycerol. Whereas in a triglyceride, you have three fatty acids attached to the glycerol molecule. Um, now, phospholipids, these are not used to store energy. They actually have a, a structural function inside of living organisms. Phospholipids are actually what create basically all cell membranes that exist on planet Earth. And so all living things are made of cells, and those cells have a cell membrane, which we'll talk about a lot in um, our next unit, actually unit two. But that cell membrane, the main component of that cell membrane is these phospholipids. So these phospholipids... Um, will form this structure here when they all come next to, when they all um, arrange themselves next to each other, um, you're gonna form this membrane, which I'll point out in a little bit more detail in the next slide. But before I do that, I want to, uh, to point out one more thing here about phospholipids. Because of this phosphate group, the phosphate group is actually very polar and hydrophilic. This loves water. And these, these tails, which are made of just a bunch of hydrocarbons, these fatty acids, they are very nonpolar. So we actually end up with a molecule here that has a region. This region actually becomes very polar and hydrophilic. It likes water, but then there's another region of this molecule that's still nonpolar and hydrophobic. So this molecule is kind of special because it has a region that's hydrophilic and polar, likes water, and then it has a region that's nonpolar and hydrophobic and doesn't like water, all in this the same molecule. Um, and that actually is what allows it to create this special structure we hear, see here in cell membranes. And so phospholipids, what happens when they're around other phospholipids, they're going to form what's called a lipid bilayer, which is like a double layer. So when all these phospholipids are with other phospholipids, these polar um, regions, so we call this the polar head. The polar head is this phosphate group attached to the glycerol. It makes this whole area polar or hydrophilic. We call this a hydrophilic head or a 
a polar head, it likes water. And these tails though, like I said, these are non-polar or hydrophobic. And what happens when these phospholipids find each other is the, po the polar heads are gonna like to be next to each other. They're gonna interact with each other because they're all hydrophilic and they're all gonna line up with each other. And the hydrophobic tails, which are non-polar and they don't like water, they like to line up and interact with one another, kind of like this, it's very organized. Um, but then we actually end up creating a, a double layer where there's a layer of phospholipids here where my mouse is circling. And then there's another layer of phospholipids here. And those two layers are actually facing, um, facing each other in a way where the hydrophobic tails are all in the middle of this layer. They're all in the middle. And the hydrophilic heads that like water, they're on the outside and the inside of this layer. So they're pointing to the, the, the two sides of the layer. And that's because that's where there's gonna be a bunch of water. So this cell membrane, if you zoom in, here's a cell and here's the cell membrane. If you zoom in, you're gonna see this structure here. Now inside the cell, on one side of this membrane, there is a bunch of water filling the cell. And on the outside of the cell, there's a bunch of water because these cells exist in living things. And um, so we end up with this double layer that forms, this lipid bilayer where the hydrophilic heads are exposed to the inside and the outside of the cell where there's water. And the hydrophobic tails are all hiding inside the bilayer away from the water to get um, away from the water because they're hydrophobic. So that's what a, a cell membrane looks like. So that's what phospholipids are. That's the structure of a phospholipid and that's why they're important. They form cell membranes. Um, and then the last type of lipid you guys need to know are steroids. Steroids, um, these look a lot different than phospholipids and triglycerides. These are not made of glycerol. They're not made of fatty acid chains. Um, but steroids, they they look like this, first of all. They are nonpolar, so that's what they have in common with other lipids. These guys are very hydrophobic. They're nonpolar. They don't like water. Um, here are three examples, cholesterol, testosterone, and estrogen. If you guys look, the, what, what they have in common is they're made up of these four fused carbon rings. So four fused carbon rings, four fused carbon rings, four fused carbon rings. So remember that these rings that they're showing you here, there's a bunch of carbons and hydrogens they're not showing you because these are the summarized structure. So just imagine there's a bunch of carbon, 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 and uh, hydrogens that they're not showing you. But these four fused carbon rings is what is characteristic of a steroid. That's how you know you're looking at a steroid molecule. So when I look at this, I know it's a steroid because there's four fused carbon rings. Um, and these are gonna be nonpolar because um, and, and hydrophobic, they don't like water. And they're mostly nonpolar because of all these hydrocarbons. Um, and so some functions are examples of steroids. First of all, cholesterol is one example we'll kind of look at soon in the next unit, not so much right now, but just know that cholesterol is actually a component of the, of the cell membrane in animals. So in our cell membranes, we have some cholesterol and it's, it's doing something to help with the cell membrane and we'll talk about that later. Um, but then there's also sex hormones. So uh, you guys have certain hormones that are responsible for your sexual development um, as male or female. Um, there's testosterone and estrogen. Um, and these hormones are released in your body and bind to different cells in your body and cause different things to happen in your body. And these hormones are actually steroids, which are lipids. So these are, these are steroid molecules, which are lipids. Um, and if you remember, if you're paying attention to all these videos and you're studying, um, I also said that proteins are hormones. And so this is another thing that confuses students. Most of your hormones in your body are actually proteins, but your sex hormones, specifically testosterone and estrogen, these hormones are, are lipids. These are steroids, which are lipids. They're not proteins. And so, but anyway, there's some examples of, of steroids, um, which are lipids and they're hydrophobic and they're nonpolar. They don't like water. Uh, so that's, that's basically it. So you guys need to know those three types of lipids, triglycerides, phospholipids, and steroids, and basically know the, their basic structure and functions, and then that's all you need to know about lipids. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later.